Well, hello, Ilmarin. Hopefully you can hear me. The stream and Twitch are both being um, annoying today. Did I say that out loud? Yep, absolutely annoying. They're just, you know, not cooperating. Good grief. All right. So, Nerd Dude, hello, guys. Dude. Good. Hello, guys. Oh, wait a minute. I guess I should turn this stupid thing down. God. Heaven forbid you should remember my settings, computer. <laughs> oh, man. It's cold out here in uh, Oklahoma for once. Makes me grumpy. I'm an old man. Don't like the cold. Don't like the hot. I just don't like things, mostly. Except for calves and, you know, people that hang out with me and do hobby stuff. So, time for the litany. Sort of one of those 40K things that people used to do, I think. Time to talk about um, what we're doing here tonight, what we're going to try and work on, what we're going to try and accomplish. And um, say hello to everybody out there. Kind of running a little bit behind tonight, but hopefully everything will be hunky-dory. Um, so, um, probably most of you that are here remember these guys. These fellas, this gray pile of plastic that I'm, uh, I've got to get together for Virtual CavCon, amongst possibly some other stuff I need to paint for Virtual CavCon. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, I'm hoping that all of you are doing a little bit of painting for Virtual CavCon as well. Mere dude, surely to goodness that airbrush is there. Time for you to start showing us what's going on with that airbrush, man. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, but yeah, so tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to kind of cheat. Uh, I'm a little bit behind. I felt I should I didn't really get much done this weekend in terms of hobby. So I'm going to use part of the stream to do some airbrushing on my uh, guys. I'm going to get some base colors down and hang out with you guys. Like I said, this is a hobby hangout kind of show. Get together th with your friends and talk a bunch of crap. Drink a diet soda or something a little uh, fizzier if that's what you're into. Talk about the games that you want to play. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not playing a whole lot of games. What? Mere dude, it's here? Oh, my. Nice. Awesome, man. I am excited. to. Uh, I'm excited to hear about your setup and what your experiences are. Because uh, I, I, it's a good thing, I think. Airbrushing is... It's a great tool to have in your pocket when you're trying to do hobby stuff. Oh my gosh. Well, 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 well. That moment when you look up and realize that one of your daughters has snuck in and stole your last paper towel and you didn't realize that before the stream. So you steal one out of the trash can that you weren't gonna use. All right, I had to clean this airbrush. This is my old trusty Sotar 2020. Really good before the stream. It was kind of gunked up more than I thought it should have been. So I had to put it through the old uh, Sonic cleaner. Kind of like Doctor Who's Sonic screwdriver, but with uh, but for airbrushes and jewelry. So yeah, that's what's going on here. That's what's going on here. All right, so what are we going to do? Um, the paint scheme I have in mind for these guys is fairly bright. So I'm going to end up putting uh, painting these guys mostly white when you get right down to it. But I'm going to start out painting them white by painting them black, which is, you know, about par for the course for my level of sophistication. Um, I'm going to do kind of a kind of a zenithal. You know, I want to have some dark colors on the underside and the backside and the downside of the tank. Um, but mostly it's going to be kind of uh, bright gray and bright white when I'm done with it. So that the yellows that I'm going to put on it will, um, will be fairly bright. Fairly bright. So... With a little bit of luck tonight, we'll get at least this black coat on. Maybe a little bit more than that. I'm going to want... Come here, little... Eh, maybe not you. 
I need a good brush for cleaning the tip of my airbrush. So, so I got this here makeup brush that goes right in between those two little prongs on my needle guard. Very useful for keeping the tip clean, which is a joke that lots of uh, airbrushers that stream like to make and it, I don't make it as a joke. It's just a thing you need to do. So yeah, we're just going to spray black. And where did this is, well obviously you have somebody there in the house, I believe you told me that knows how to airbrush. So uh, my way of learning was to um, just primer the crap out of stuff, basically. I just, I, I stopped priming with any kind of rattle can. And uh, that's how I kind of learned the basics of how to, uh, how to airbrush was I just went in and primered like all the miniatures. You can't really mess it up. But, you know, it's really just, you know, one coat. Um, and it teaches a little bit about control. And, you know, you can take your time and practice. And, you know, just get used to the way the airbrush feels in your hand. Man, I love the way that matte black looks on there. I might need to... Is that... Huh. You know, I've always looked at it this way. What if I went the other direction? Let me adjust some settings over here off camera. Can I adjust these settings anymore? Nope, I guess that's it. That's what you get. All right. So, yeah. Look back over this guy. Like I said, principally the black is going to be down here where I'm spraying now when I'm done. Mostly on the treads and like the bottom sides of these armor plates, the underside of this turret, things like that. And so now we're just going to rinse and repeat that like a whole bunch of times. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's the right way to, to tackle it, Mayor Dude. Just get in there and primer up a bunch of models that you've been holding off on and get used to it. Um, I don't know what you, have you already got your paints? Do, do, you, do you already own primer? Are you, are you ready to go that way? Did you order something to thin your paints down with along with your airbrush? Imperator's arm will fit into a cons shoulders. Mm, I don't know, but God, that's, Imperator is a gigantic calf and a con is a a fairly delicate thing, kind of, I mean, sort of this size. I, I, I can't imagine that's gonna, that's gonna work. But I mean, I don't know. And I, unfortunately, I don't have one handy where I could try it out for you. Yeah. So Ilmarin, I've seen, um, uh, John did some tinkering with the kit bashing one of those a while back. Um, I can't remember what it was he used, but if, if, if he shows up online tonight, you'd be sure and ask him, post it up in the discord. I'm sure that somebody's made a Mongol kit bash. I feel confident. I tell you what, um, Hugh, 16 models. Yep, got black primer, flow improver, thinner and cleaner. Yeah, yeah, all right, Mir, dude, you're set up. I just need to stop bugging you and let you get to work. Sounds like you have everything ready to go. I'm excited to see what you do. Make sure you post up some pictures, share your experiences over on, on Discord or, or Facebook or wherever you choose to. That way, you know, uh, you know, pe people can, uh, you know, can, can see what you're doing and, and see what you're learning. And I find that, you know, a, a lot of times, me, I'm you. Know, if I'm kind of new at something, I might have a question I would love to ask, but I'm kind of hesitant to because you know I don't want to come off like a, you know, noob or you know like like some kind of. I guess I feel awkward sometimes, and so it helps you know if if people start talking about things, especially the basics, right? You know, like what kind of brushes do you use? That's a very common question. You know, how do you go about? Primering your models, just little simple things, not not the 
the advanced stuff that Todd and Ross and those kind of or that kit bash that Hugh's doing that that kind of stuff that's that's high level stuff. A lot of times, just just sharing your your basic experiences are just really good for the community. It gives people a chance to a see what you're doing, maybe learn something from from the things that you stubbed your toe on. And it just makes it feel, you know, comfortable. Hey, you know, I, I'm not the only one that doesn't know how to do this or isn't sure how to do it and things like that. Here, dude, boy, you're, you're ambitious. You got 16 models and you're going to do 12 more? Whew, that's a lot of stuff. Probably beginning of March when I make my next order, I'll be looking at getting some imps, cons, etc. All right, so Il- Ilmarin, if you'll, if you'll post this question up over on Discord, um, if I don't have those pieces, um, I'm sure John or somebody out there in the Discord has, and, and they'll pull an arm out and a con out and lay them up next to, to it and, t- and take a photo so you can get a feel for how that's going to work. Um, but yeah, I, I'm i sure I have an Imperator. I don't actually like the con model very much, so I'm not 100% sure I have one, but I think I do. And if I can find them, I will, I will take that picture for you laying next to each other so you can see how that might work out. And if I don't, I guarantee you somebody like Hugh or, or you know, somebody out there has got one. All right. This was this is one of my favorite parts of the of any painting project because the priming, you know, it's it's always. It always comes out pretty good. And so I'm like, yeah, these guys are going to be great. <laughs> Until I get to the point where they actually have colors on them. And then I'm like, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, my choices were bad. My dog ate my homework. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I feel pretty confident somebody has already done this or tried this or... or or is willing to do those uh, that comparison for you. So, the Mongol. I, I mean, obviously, it's 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 a it's probably a non ECM. Is it an attack model? I can't recall it uh, off the top of my head. I know John was in the like this time last year was making all kinds of um, uh, new variants, or at least that's when I discovered them. Heck, he probably made them five years ago, and I just never noticed. Sorry, I'm being quiet. Less than 200 points to medium max and EST. Yeah, okay. Ooh, EST. See, that's a good thing, right? Anytime you can find EST in a in a non-recon model, there's an opportunity for you to uh, to build a force, you know, it, just kind of in a different direction. It gives you more options. There's nothing wrong with bringing in a you know, a, a recon model into an attack squad to gain that EST. But if you can do it and and stay all attack, I just feel like comparatively that squad is going to have more more output, more firepower than a squad that has to drag a recon model in to pick up that EST. A Mongol and a Reaper is an attack squad. Ooh, my God. Re- Reaper is the guided missile beast, right? And the two Imperators, yeah, I know what those look like. Oh, man. And, yeah, and, oh, my gosh. All right, so the Reaper is only guided missiles, as I recall. So he's going to have to, does he have tag? I can't recall if that guy has tag or not. Because if not, he's definitely going to have to have that that uh, EST from the, from the Mongol. So he does have tag. Two medium max, four heavy max, and four heavy guided missiles. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that is a that is a fearsome squad. I, that that is that is some beef right there, Ilmarin. That is some heck of beef. Heavy guided missiles. That shock. The imp and the reaper have 
TC2. So yeah, that EST is just crucial. So now here's the thing um, you're going to have to think about, right? So, so I mean, you're putting together a great squad, right? And, and that EST, to me, is key. So when I look at that squad, my job is to kill that Mongol because that Mongol is like a, he's a force multiplier for the, uh, for the Imperators and the Reapers. I mean, the fact that they can turn on their targeting computers and still move and shoot, um, that's just fantastic. So he is doing serious work. And that guy is, per, to me, in that squad, he is target number one. I am coming after that Mongol if I, if I have the opportunity. So you're going to have to think about that when you put that guy on the table, right? So, you know, somebody that, that understands what you're doing is, is going to prioritize that guy. And so he's still going to have to kind of play like a recon dude. He's going to want to hide out, not give up line of sight to him. You know, he's, he's t t take advantage of cover, you know, anything he can do to stay alive. All right, pop this guy off. Hey, Cthulhu. By the way, Colonel Kane, I saw you earlier. I forgot to say hi. Uh, you made a comment about Black Primer, and I, I just I got busy and didn't think about greeting you. Nice to see you in here, Mr. Kane, Colonel Kane. And uh, I'm, I, I hesitate to ever say it's nice to see you, Cthulhu, but I guess in this case it's okay. <laughs> uh. That's funny. Cthulhu, was it you that shared those, um, some kind of GW fantasy figures the other day that you were painting? Some, some non cab stuff? I feel like I saw you post about that. Maybe some war cry figures? I, I can't remember exactly what they were. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I, I thought that was you. Um, what's going on with those guys? Are, are they war cry figures? God, there's so many, I mean, there's so many more models than I will ever have the chance to paint. I love painting fantasy figures. Honestly, I find them easier to paint than, than this kind of stuff. And I love that. Tanks are my favorite models of all time. But fantasy figures to me oftentimes are just easier to paint because there's, you know, the details already, it, just the organic nature of it makes it so that there are some simple techniques that are, that are just super effective. Whereas things that are, you know, you know, like cars and tanks, you know, their their color gradients have to be precise across a piece of armor. Doesn't make sense that it would, you know, undulate or change tones awkwardly in the middle of a of a like a quarter panel on a car. But you could certainly do that with like a troll. Dragon rampant. Yeah. So dragon rampant. Is that put out by um Hold on, don't tell me. Don't type it yet. Don't type it yet. Dragon Rampant. What is the name of the the same people that put out um hold on, I'm gonna cheat. Who puts that stuff out? Osprey. Do, does Osprey do Dragon Rampant? <sighs> Painted in all grayscales. That's very interesting. Yeah, okay. Speaking of Osprey, at least I think Osprey is the one that's doing that. You know, we have the, you're probably all familiar, hopefully you're all familiar with Frostgrave, which is a, a sort of an Osprey product. I, I think the people from Osprey are uh, publishing it along with that Mr. McCullough fella. I think he's doing another game called Stargrave, which is sort of like a um, sort of like a, a, a science fiction version of Frostgrave. 
Which, which, I mean, I, I like Frostgrave a lot. My wife and I played that quite a bit, and so I'm looking forward to Stargrave. But I've heard John mention a couple of different times that he's very curious to see if we couldn't make some sort of a, obviously non, not, not for profit, just, just for fun, some sort of a Stargrave cav crossover so that we could, uh, we could do some kind of adventuring, maybe use the, uh, you know, that, that sort of growth RPG level up adventuring system, um, that you find in the Frostgrave and presumably in the Stargrave book, if we couldn't some find, find a way to adapt that for just a fun little, uh, cab campaign, I think that would be hilarious. N- not, not hilarious in a, in a, in a, like a laugh out loud comedy way, but just like, wow, I'm super excited for that sort of thing. Osprey. John, uh, John shared some pictures of that, um, the Badger, um, dropship that he's working on, the one that's going to be in MDF. Uh, I think he shared this publicly. I'm pretty sure he did. Um, that's looking pretty exciting. I'm curious to see what he does with it for, like, uh, some of the finishing touches he's been talking about. Uh, I mean, last Wednesday I asked him when the first retail customer would have a badger in their hands. And when I say retail customer, I'm not talking about like me and Ross and Todd and people like that, naval missiles. Um, but I'm talking about you guys like Ilmarin or Mare Dude or Cthulhu. Sweet. Cthulhu. Um, and he said that, that that thing should be in someone's hands by the end of the month. So, I'm excited. I, I ever since he showed off that broadsword, I've been I've been wanting to get something like that and get it just painted up and you know to use as like a you know like a prop for my pictures of my calves. And you know if it has to be the broad or the badger, I will take it. Stargrave is getting three plastic boxes, Mercs, Crew, and Trooper boxes. Well, that's exciting. Um, I'm totally buying that game when it comes out. But I, I'm, I, I, I'm just really interested to see... Uh, Ilmarin, yeah, he's, he hasn't made up his mind yet, but um, sort of and I, offline, he's, he's made a couple of numeric comments that I'm not going to repeat, but it was very reasonable, in my opinion. I, I mean, like, ridiculously reasonable. I thought for what you were getting, it was it was a good value. So if he's anywhere around that number that he said, I think everybody will be quite pleased. But like I said, so... so Again, I, I have no idea what Frostgrave, or excuse me, Stargrave is really going to be like. But I know in Frostgrave, just in case you're not familiar with it, there's this, you know, like, you do a scenario, your um, your core group of people uh, gain skills, they level up, maybe they get hurt, Some, sometimes they die permanently, sometimes they get injured with permanent lasting effects. But the fun thing is, you know, over the course of time, you're, you're able to, just like an RPG or a video game with, uh, you know, RPG elements, God, I got to remember to actually put this thing on the camera. I'm just, I'm really just at the store hanging out. No, not 1200 US. I, I think I can safely say, Colonel Kane, that whatever the dropship costs, it's going to be less than 1200 US. I don't think John is going to jump my crap for, for, for saying that number. I don't think so. The stream goes dead like in the middle of a. Yeah, yeah, I, again, I, maybe this Wednesday or, or possibly even tomorrow during Terrain Tuesday, you, you can get him to throw a number out there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go any further down that path. I don't want to get myself in trouble. Um, but, um, so like I said, Frostgrave's got this system whereby as you, as, as you play the game, you achieve goals throughout the course of the, of the, of the tabletop scenario, and those goals have have 
an impact on your force. They basically control what sorts of uh, additions, modifications, improvements you're allowed to make to your force in between scenarios. And so I would love to see something like that come to uh, come to CAV. I mean, you know, the idea, you know, maybe you start out like, you know, like, like a lieutenant or a second lieutenant, um, um, you know, in charge of like a little recon force, right? And so you play, you know, a mission or two as this recon commander and, you know, like you earn points that allow you to, you know, maybe upgrade, you know, your, uh, your calves by buying essays or maybe even replacing one, you know, with a better, you know, like, you know, going from a, from a con to a Mongol, as Ilmarin was talking about earlier with his kit bash, um, stuff like that. I, I, oh my gosh, I would play that. I would play that forever. I mean, just, just the idea was like, oh, okay. I, I earned, I don't know, 350, you know, TV during the last scenario. That means I can buy a, an outlaw tank and attach it to my force and you know, just that kind of stuff. That, that would be, that would be a hoot. Maybe, you know, level my pilot up. So he goes from being a regular pilot to a veteran or, you know, buying, you know, some, maybe you find some sort of, you know, esoteric weapon that, that isn't allowed to be bought. So, so like a, an IDF, what, I can't can't think of what IDF stand for, but, um, you know, just, just some of the more advanced weapon systems, you know, you would have to like discover them as treasure before you could equip them on your mech or, uh, think stuff like that. Hold on a second. John sent me a sent, sent a message. I'm telling him to come join us so you guys can bug him with questions. So if Talon Game shows up here in a few minutes, you guys know what to do, right? Just tell him he's got to give us a hint, a clue, something like that. But yeah, so, um, you know, the you know the idea where, you know, we're like, uh, Ilmarin and I play a scenario and, you know, we look at the end results, like, you know, I achieved half my goals, he achieved three quarters of his, and those are worth either some points or, you know, maybe, maybe we, we discovered a cache of, like, you know, hidden parts or, you know, just, just something like that, you know, where there's this, the sort of reward system for performance that allows you to organically grow your force up in a in a fun way and, and at the same time you know there's not only just pluses there are also negatives right so like your commander was you know his, his cab was destroyed or her cab was destroyed and so um you know there's a chance that they were injured and if so you know maybe they have to sit the game out or i don't know like they gain some sort of negative modifier that would just be fun yeah 1200 usd i i'll tell you what you send me 1200 usd i will send you at least one badger at, at the at the very, very least. I would never do that. I am not that kind of person. I guarantee it's not going to be anything near 1,200 United States dollars. If it is, I'm not going to have one. I mean, I, I like toys. I will spend stupid money on toys, but... I'm not sure I would go $1,200 for one of those dropships. I like them. Maybe not quite that much. Maybe not. <laughs> you have to go through boot for... Yeah, yeah, Colonel Kane. I mean, that, that sort of idea you, where there's, you know, like you start out as a lowly, I don't know, sergeant or, or, or lieutenant or just whatever, you know, and... and, and you know, maybe you're not even the commander. I, I don't know what it would look like. Um, I mean, I have played Frostgrave, so I can give, you know, I have some sense of how that works. But, you know, uh, you know like a, a Stargrave, you know, a science fiction story is going to have like a little bit different background. And so I'm not quite sure how they're going to handle, you know, like um, earning, you know, like rewards and, you know, like, I mean, it's easy in fantasy, right? So you just open a chest and you find a magic item and, you know, we don't need a lot of explanation. It's magic. Uh, in science fiction, I mean, obviously you can do anything you want, but, you know, I feel like uh, Cab Boss. Yeah. Well, Cab Boss, you could get $1,200, probably just not for one of them. We were, uh, we've just been talking about, I've been talking about all kinds of stuff. 
And Ilmarin's got this question about an imperator's arm into a con shoulder. Kavos, didn't you do a Mongol conversion back back when those first became a thing? I want to say you did, or some kind of conversion, where you took like a little small recon guy and gave him some upgunned arms. Yeah, I believe you're right, Tiger Wraith. Um, speaking of which, I was praising you your uh, conversion work earlier. Medium max. Oh, that's even worse. What are they, 5-5? Five, five? Dictator max on it. Yeah, all right. That's right. That's right. You cut up a dictator to do that. Where am I at? Next outlaw. 5-3, yeah. Five is a good number. Five will give you a chance to hurt people. Especially after, you know, later in the game, you know. So my thought with the that EST model is, you know, obviously in the beginning of the game, you got to kind of hide him a little bit to leverage his value and keep him from getting sniped. But later on, after things are beat up a little bit, those five max are, uh, those things are actually pretty nasty. Yeah, seriously, Tiger, right? that conversion you're doing, that thing is beautiful, man. I mean, you deserve all the praise in the world. I can't wait to see you get some paint on it. You've always been really good at those. You, you were making those uh, mastodons, is that it? Back back before they become, you know, we had some hint that they were going to be available, like, you know, again. So I gathered, John, you're not ready to announce a price yet for the uh, for the Badger. You haven't puzzled that out yet. Or maybe you want to reveal it right here on this show. Give us an exclusive, John. Come on now. You know we need it. We need the numbers. Oh, we got our rookie numbers. We need to pump those numbers up. I think that was a movie line I heard once. Yeah, Ilmer and I agree. Uh, the Imperators got those uh, those kind of really um, symmetric, you know, laid out like sort of nodules or you know, so, so, sort of like raised um, trapezoids. I'm not quite sure what the what to call them, but they do look really good. Um, I mean, I guess I would just have to have one in front of me to see, you know, whether or not I thought it would work out. The the problem is that Imperator is a big beefy have and the con is not and so you know i'm not obviously i mean do your, your model paint the thing anyway cut it up any way you want but um for my take i'm just i'm a little worried that the imperator stuff is going to be a little bit too big i think my airbrush is saying hey dummy you need to unclog me just a little bit even this is primer there we go all right Yeah, so that arm is really big. I, I feel confident you're going to have to do some modifications. I don't think you're going to be able to take that shoulder pad and the elbow and the cannon off of the Imperador and attach them to a con. I don't know that, but I just, I, in my head, the way, the way I remember that Imperator, I just don't see that, that working. The Imperator is a big old beefy mech. And the con is a pretty, you know, it's a fairly, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a little recon guy. But I am curious to see what you do with it. I 
nine square feet of MDF to cut out a badger. Huh. Have you cut yours uh, to its final form yet, Cav Boss? Do, is, there, uh, is there still more uh, gubbins to make for the exterior of it? <laughs> Never go too big with guns. More DACA. Well, you know, it's kind of hard to argue with that. Um, it's kind of hard to argue with that logic there, Cthulhu. I saw today, I won't talk about this for very long because this is not, this is a cab channel, but I saw today um, where somebody had done an orc marine kind of conversion that looked really good. Um, Mini Wargaming was talking about it. Just looked like a really cool looking take on a, on a, what an orc space marine would look like. Engineering is good now. So, so cab, what you're telling us is, cab boss, is that the, you're happy with the way the joints come together, you know, in the pieces. You've got the angles right. You've got the the scaling is all right. It's the size you want it to be. Now we're just sort of giving it some 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 detail, some surface structure. This is what you're working on now. <laughs> A cat fight. Of, so so they're, the cats are fighting on your front porch. Is that what's going on over there? Great. Well, I guess the tank tread stuck because they had a... Well, that's not going to work. That putty is not happy. I guess I'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Now I got something down here. I got something down here that'll hold that. Here's a little trick for you. I got these fairly cheap vice grips, right? Check this out. Here's what you can do with them. Look at there. Look at there. And now I can hold this guy and not have to worry about him getting away from me. Well, so so basically what you're saying is your whole is is your ho you're hosting WrestleMania on the front porch. Is that what's going on, Ilmarin? A little WrestleMania action. Are we out of juice again? No, nope, not out of juice. Just stuck. They didn't pay the door fee either. Yeah, Colonel Kane, I that's what I was using earlier was an old pill bottle, but um, the putty on top of it is give, is is not sticky enough, and I don't feel like switching it out. So I had the other thing handy, so I switched over to it real quick. Man, this thing is just really giving me fits now. Must be something clogged up in it. Working off stream to clean up, or off camera to clean up this silly airbrush. I guess I thought it was off camera. Whoa! Behind the door! Didn't pay the door fee. Well, guys, you know, I, so I have been kind of throwing an idea around that I have for something to hopefully entertain you during the course of um, uh, virtual CavCon. Um, I have this idea for sort of um, an alternative 
kind of a cab game, something you might see at the War Master Tournament. Sort of a mix um, of um, uh, soccer and a demolition derby all at the same time. A um, long time ago, back in the early cab days, John pointed out to me, there was um, an article in one of Reaper's magazines about... Um, uh, um, I can't remember the name of it, but essentially calf soccer. Some uh, some some of the guys wrote up rules to uh, to uh, basically play soccer with calf. And it, the, I read them. I, I didn't I didn't get all the references to all the the early versions of the rules, but it looked like a lot of fun. And I thought to myself, you know, we could do something like that on the stream during virtual CavCon and have a good time with it. And so I've been trying to brainstorm some alternative rules that, that, that go with what we that go with the modern version of CAV. And um, I've, I've I got a rough a rough draft knocked out that I think is going to be a lot of fun because uh, this is not going to be you know like it's it 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 owes some uh, it owes a little bit of respect to uh, soccer, but it's it's also a little bit like crazy pinball because. Um, in this game that I that I have in mind, there are there's not just one cav ball, there are not just two cav balls, all at the same time on the field at the same time, five cav balls all at the same time, and they're all open to score and they're open to bounce around and smash into enemy calves and cause all kinds of mayhem and ruckus and have fun. So um, that's something that I'm working on. I hope to get it a. Uh, um, uh, tinkered with and play tested a little bit and tweaked up and I'm going to paint up a couple of teams with uh, with a little bit of luck and uh, hopefully get a chance to entertain you and beyond that I'm hoping that we can find a way for you to interact with the game as Twitch viewers so I've n there's a way I don't know much about it yet but there's a way for you um, to uh, to take some of the points you earn by watching the various talent games channels and uh, use them to, you know, do things in the Twitch stream like highlight messages and just, you know, oddball little things like like that. Well, I'm hoping to find a way to leverage that so that during the course of the game you can spend some of your hard-earned points and do things like, you know, hack the... Uh, hack the uh, control systems of one of the calves and, and, and make it play for the other team for a turn or, you know, fire some crazy rocket propelled grenades or something from the stands into the battlefield. I don't know. I'm still trying to come up with some ideas. The idea is for it to be a fun, zany, hilarious, you know, way to spend an hour or two online and, and just, just have a good time. Have a really good time. So as I get the rules uh, cleaned up, I'm going to post them up so you guys can give me some, your feedback about them and let me know uh, what I can do to improve them. So look out for that over on the Discord and maybe the Facebooks and things like that in the next week or two. Hopefully before then. Hmm. Need a little bit more on this guy. It's kind of hard to paint this fellow underneath the camera. I always like to make sure I get the black coat on really good and solid everywhere because, you know, it, it basically covers a multitude of sins, right? So when I go to paint this guy, if there's black that I um, somehow overlook painting, it'll just kind of look like a shadow, you know, it'll, it'll just kind of blend in. But if it's a, a different color, you know, like if, um, if you can see the gray through it, then that can be distracting and not what I'm looking for. So I always try and make sure... Um, all right, so let me, yeah, 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 sorry, the Anubis Guards, right, the Krakens, uh, Tusekis, were there some Tusekis there, Colonel Kane? I did see those, I'm sorry, I totally forgot to mention those. Um, they have kind of a, what is that, that, the, the, the main color that you've got on those Krakens there? So I recall it's kind of dark tan kind of a brown and then you've got some my memory is not as good as it should be like red and teal or red and green or red and turquoise something like that i 
I did mean to comment about those and I just, it slipped my mind. Sorry for that. So that's part of, um, so, I mean, have you got those guys written up? GW Steel Legion Drab. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. That makes sense. What do you have in mind for those? I'm, I mean, obviously you don't have a, an army list yet, so you're just prepping stuff with the expectation that the Anubis Guards will, you know, have access to that kind of stuff? Or what's your thought process there, Colonel? I mean, I can't imagine John saying you can't have aircraft, but, you know, who knows? This is like a new thing. He's releasing, like, you know, like a... A named force. He might actually have some rules for list construction. Maybe. I don't know. Arm in blue. Is that a contrast paint? That sounds familiar. Get this on the camera. I've taken the whole hobby thing to heart. I'm just like, camera? Nobody cares about looking at this thing. We're just here to talk. Contrast paint, yeah. I like those contrast paints. They, they're they a little pricey, but um, the ones that are worth having are definitely worth having. There's some really good paints in there. Um, I mean, the Cthulhu's been knocking it out of the park with those things. And um, I like what's going on with your, uh, your Krakens right now as well. Perfect. See, Colonel K, that's exactly what this show is supposed to be about. We're supposed to, you know, we're just hanging out, hobbying together, right? Pull out your minis, pull out your paints. And just remember that, well, at least for me, my favorite color is done. That is my favorite color of paint. Getting low there again. Yep, out of paint. Cool. Did your primer, uh, what, what color did you primer those guys, Colonel Kane? Or are you painting that contrast paint over the top of that, um, the drab, the Legion drab? Did anybody here get a chance to see what Chris was working on Saturday? I have not. I have not had a moment's rest to sit down and look at that stream. I missed it. I mostly miss those because Saturdays are busy for me. But I usually try and go back and see see what he was doing. I just haven't had a chance this week. Steinle Res Green. Yeah, Steinle Res is great. Great primer. I love Steinle Res primers. That's what I'm using right here. Steinle Res Black. It's working on the Starhawk 7. Is that just a... Um, what scale was he working on that Starhawk 7? Is it a, a cab model or is it, was he working on the big model? What's he doing? Yeah, Colonel Kane. Steinle Res is definitely uh, my favorite. My, absolutely my favorite um, primer. There is one other brand I would like to give it a shot because I like their other products, but um, I've not had a chance to pick it up yet. Uh, Monument Hobbies does a line of paints, and I think they just released some, some primers recently. And I've not had a chance to see them. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Mr. Jason Craze, the guys over there at Monument Hobbies, and his painting ability and knowledge and stuff like that. So if he makes a primer, I'm going to guess it's probably pretty good. I, like I said, I just haven't had a chance to check it out yet. Mirror dude, 28 millimeter. So you're saying that that thing is gigantic compared to a cab is that what you mean when you say 28 millimeter so like it it would stand up you know it's, it's like a like a huge model right not not cab sized it's not this sized it's like gigantic
Yeah, Colonel Kane, there's not, there, absolutely, there's nothing wrong. I mean, Steinle Res will go on perfectly fine with a brush. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. In fact, I would say most of the things you can do with an airbrush, you can do with a regular brush. And there are things you can do with a regular brush that you can't do with an airbrush. So, I mean, an airbrush is just a tool. Just a tool. You know, it's like, um, how can I put this? You know, it's sort of like, a, you know, a long time ago they had mechanical lawnmowers without an engine, right? People still cut grass, still worked. I'm sure their lawns look perfectly fine. But, um, you know, there's some, you know, the, 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 the regular, you know, the lawnmower that we're used to just makes life easier, quicker, faster. And to me, that's, that's what the airbrush does. It, um, it allows you to do some things much faster than you would otherwise be able to. And so then you can take that time you saved and put it back into the model with your, with your regular brush. Adding detail for the larger model. All right, so I'm excited about that. I really want to get a, a gigantic Starhawk 7. And Black Steiner Riz, yeah. So Black Steiner Riz is, is fantastic. That's, that's what I'm painting right now tonight. It's my go-to uh, set of primers is the Steiner Riz, black, gray, and white. I've got all three of them right here in case I happen to hello uh oh looks like the camera may have froze up looks like the camera may have froze up I don't know how to fix this let me see if I can see if that'll fix it I'm still here guys I think I'm still here I just got to get this camera to come back on. Huh. That's not working, is it? That's not working. Try this real quick. Sorry about this, guys. I don't know what's going on tonight. Things are not cooperating with me. Yeah, that's not going to work. All right. So I don't have a camera that's working right now. How am I going to fix this? Yeah, Colonel Kane, I think it's probably time. Um, all right, guys. I'm, I'm sorry to do this, but we only got about six minutes left in the stream, and my camera's down. And obviously you can't see anything on the stream. You can just hear my voice, I assume. And by the time I get this thing restarted, it's going to be almost 9 o'clock anyway. So, sorry. Ah, you're right, Colonel Kane. It's Monday. It's probably too cold for the internet down here in Oklahoma. We're not used to this sort of stuff. So, I'll just summarize real quick. Um, tomorrow, Tuesday, Terrain with John. Wednesday, me and John talking, hopefully, probably about the Badger, I'm going to guess. I'm going to talk about the Badger. John may mute me, but that's what I'm talking about. Um, and then... Um, Saturday again with Chris. Now that I know he's working on the Starhawk 7, I will try my hardest to find a way to get tuned in so I can see what he's doing there. I'm excited to get that 28 millimeter based. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for that model. Um, and then the third Thursday, which I don't know what that is off the top of my head, uh, the Big Stompy Podcast will be on, me and Ross Hines with... I'm sure some special guests. We'll talk some poor fool into joining us and we will chit chat about whatever interests you give me an idea of what you guys want to talk about and we will chit chat about it probably a lot of hobby stuff ross has been working really hard on his virtual cavcon force um so yeah that's what i know um i really appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight i was having such a good time of course the equipment decided to break ah uh, i will see you next uh next monday um where I'm sure I will have hopefully these guys at least primered and maybe even have some yellow paint on them. Um, until then, be good, be safe, be warm, and be nice. Go out and find somebody and make them smile. Be kind to the person that checks you out at the grocery store. Say hello to the person at McDonald's. Hold the door open for somebody that you might not normally hold the door open for. Just make the world a better place by you being a better person. You're all awesome anyway, but we can level up. 
Anyway, folks, thanks for stopping by. Sorry for the technical difficulties. See you Wednesday. Bye.